now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, cried sister. For this relief, much thanks. It is bitter cold and <coughs> I'm sick at heart. Have you had quiet to go? Not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. Stand home, who's there? Friends to this ground? And liegemen to the day. Give you good night. Oh, farewell, lot of soldier. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo has my place. Give you good night. Paula, Bernardo! Say, watch his Horatio there! A piece of him! Welcome, Horatio, welcome! Good, Lord Solomon. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but a fantasy, and will not let the leave take hold of him. Touching his dreaded sight, twice seen of us. Therefore, I have entreated him along with us to watch the minutes of the night. That if again this apparition come, he may prove our eyes and speak to it. Tush, tush, twill not appear. Take pause a while, and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story. What we have two nights, see. Well, tell us now, let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that westward from the pole hath made its course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself. The bell then beat him once. Peace! Break the oath! Look! Where it comes again! The same figure, like the king that's dead. Thou art a scholar. Speak to one, Horatio. Is it not like the king? Mark it, Horatio. My most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that usurps this time of night together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes mark? By heaven, I charge thee, speak! It is a fact that he stops away. Stay, speak, speak, stay and speak! Tis gone and will not answer. Before my God, I might not disbelieve without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. Hush twice before and jump at this dead hour. Marshal Stock hath he gone by our watch. In what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bodes some strange eruption to our state. But don't behold! Oh, where it comes again! I'll cross it, though it blasts me! Stay, illusion! If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, oh, speak, stay, and speak, but stop it, my zealous! It is here! It is here! Do it wrong, being so majestical to offer the show of violence, for it is as the air invulnerable, and her vein flows malicious mockery. I was about to speak when we talked through. And then it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. It faded on the throwing of a cock. But look, the morn in russet mantle clad walks o'er the dew on yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up, and by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit dumb to us will speak to him.
my cousin Hamlet, and my son, a little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord, I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy night of color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy bailed lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is, I know not scenes. It's not alone my inky cloak, good mother, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. Is indeed seen, and there are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father. But you must know, your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a cause of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. We beseech you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note, you are the most immediate to our throne. And with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart toward you? For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. But tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. Gentle, unforced, a court of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Come away. <laughs> Distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to him. 
This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, where as they had delivered both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. Where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we walked. Did you not speak to it? Oh, my lord, I did, but answer made it none. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Aren't, say you, aren't, my lord. What, was he frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. He fixed his eyes upon me. Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. I will watch tonight. Perchance to a walk again. I warrant it will. If you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. And whatsoe'er else shall happen, I give it an understanding, but no tongue I will requite your loves. So, fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty, duty to your honor. honor. For loves as mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are involved. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefits and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet, in the trifling of his favor, Hold it a fashion and a toy in blood. No more. No more but so. Think it. No more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. Then weigh what laws your honor may sustain. If with two credits ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure open to his <laughs> unmastered importunity. <laughs> fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, dear sister. And keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, while it's like a puffed and reckless uh, liberty, uh, himself the primrose path the dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. <laughs> I stay too long. Ah, but here my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon the second lead. Yet he, Elia, does a bold, a bold for shame. The wings is in the shoulder of your sail, and you're stayed for. My blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory see thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought is had. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast from their adoption tried. Rattle them to thy soul with hoops of steam. But do not dull your palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel. <laughs> but being in, bear it that your post may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's senses, but preserve thy judgment. Costly thy heavy as your post can buy. But not expressed in fancy, which not gaudy, for the apparel of the claims to man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan of close his face, itself and friend, and borrowing dull fear to husbandry. This have our fall to thine own self be true, and it must follow us the night the day. So canst the not be forced to every man. <coughs> Farewell, my blessing season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave. Farewell, Ophelia. Remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked. Oh, this is a 
Ophelia, he is sent to you. So please use something touching the Lord Hamlet. Mary, well for thought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. He hath my lord of late made many tenders of his affection to me. And do you believe these tenders as he called them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby that you have taken these tenders for true pay which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the wind of their phrase, running into dust, so tender me your food. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honourable fashion. Aye, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. And hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Aye, springes to catch what corks. I do know when the blood burns, how Roger child a soul lends the tongue. Thou, these blazes, doctor, giving more light than heat extinct in both, you must not take for fire. Poor Lord Hamlet believes so much in him that he's young, and with the large to tether may walk the maid, giving you in few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. Out not in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slender a moment's leisure as to get words? Or talk with thee, Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. Sure, be my lord. I find thee apt. 
Now, Hamlet, here. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. My prophetic soul, my uncle! I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, so wicked, wicked gifts that have the power so to seduce one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Soft, methinks I sense the morning air, brief let me be. Sleeping in my orchard upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven on in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, come from the very blossoms of my sin. No reckoning made, but set to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible. Most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark become a couch for luxury and damned incest. Howsoever thou pursuest this act, Taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, to those thorns which in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Tell me what it was. The glowworm shows the mountain to be near and begins to pay out its ineffectual fire. Adieu. Adieu. Hamlet. Remember me! Remember thee! Ah, uh, that poor ghost! My memory holds a seat in this distracted globe! Remember thee! Yea, in the tingle of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven! Oh, most pernicious woman! Oh, villain, villain! Smiling, damned villain! Meet, it is I set it down that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle! There you are! Now to my word, it is that you, that you remember me, I have sworn to... Hello, hello, boy, come, Bert, come! How's my noble lord? What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful! Good, my lord, tell it! No, you'll reveal it! <laughs> no, I, my lord, why no. have you? No, I, my lord, there's never a villain dwelling in old Denmark, but he's an errant name. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. <laughs> but you are in the right, and so without more circumstance at all, I hold it that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire shall point you for every man has business and desire such as it is. And for my own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily, yet thank heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, I sing hatchet, but there is Horatio and much offense too. Touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost, that's let me tell you. And now, good friends, never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, lord we, we will not. not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord. Not I. No, I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. We have sworn, my lord, already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. <laughs> never to speak of this that you have seen, swear by my sword. <laughs> oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of in your philosophy. Come, here, as before, never, so help you mercy, how strange or odd so where I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, to note that you know aught of me. So grace and mercy at your most need help you swear. Swear! 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 So, gentlemen, let us go in together. 
and seal your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spice, that ever I was born to set it right. They come, let's go together. <laughs> Night, day, and time, therefore, since gravity 
the soul of wit, and tedious nest in limbs and out of flourishes, I will be free. <laughs> Your noble son is mad. <laughs> uh, 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 mad, Clyde, for, for, for two divine true madness, for this is but to be nothing else but mad, but let that go. More matter with less art. Uh, uh, good madam, I swear I use no art at all. That he's mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity and pity, tis, tis true. A foolish thing about for well if I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him that. <laughs> and now it remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather said, the cause of this defect. For this effect, the effect that comes because thus it remains, and the remainder thus. <laughs> Perfect. I have a daughter, had whilst she's mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, has given me this. Now gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an impress, a valpress. Beautified is a valpress, but you shall hear. I came this from Hamlet to her. My good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. <laughs> Doubt thou thy star sapphire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt, I love. Thine evermore, most dear lady, while this machine is to him, Hamlet, this in obedience, hard would not to show me. How had she received his love? What do you think of me? As a man faithful and honourable. I was fain proof, sir. What might you think? I mean, when I had seen this hot love on the wing, what might you think? No, I went round to work, and my young mistress, thus did I speak. That she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens, which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repulsed a short tale to me, fell into a sadness, then a fast, then to a watch, then into a weakness, then to a lightness, and by this declension into the madness where he now erased and all be mourned for. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. After being such a time, I would fain know that that I have positively said tis so when it proved otherwise. Not that I know of. Take this from this if it be otherwise. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in his lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I lose my daughter to him. For you and I, behind the nearest then, mark the encounter, if we love him not, and be not from his reason formed the wrong, let there be no assistance for his state. We will try it. But look, where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you, both away. I'll be bought him presently. Give me leave. How does, my good lord, how does? Well, God of mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. Aye, sir, to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. For if the sun breed maggots in a dead dog, then you God kissing Harriet. Have you a daughter? <laughs> Have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter may conceive. Friend, look to it. Still harping on my daughter. That in you be not the first that was a fish under. He's far gone, far gone. And truly, my youth has suffered much extremity for love. What do you read, my lord? Words. 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 What is the matter, my lord? Between him? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rope says here that old men are wrinkled, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, <laughs> together with most weak hands, all which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, though I hold it not honesty to have it thus set down, for yourself, sir, should be as old as I am, if, like a crab, you could go backwards. Will this be madness, yet there's method in it. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. Indeed, that is out of the air. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. My honourable lord, I will most humbly take my leave. You cannot, sir, take
take from me anything that I would more willingly part with all except my life. Except my life. Except my life. Fare you well, my lord. This genius old fool. You going to seek the Lord Hamlet? There he is. God save you, sir. My honored lord. My most dear lord. My excellent good friend. How dost thou feel in Sir Rosencrantz? Good lads, how do you both? What's the news? None, my lord, but that the world's grown honest. And it's doomsday here. If your news is not true, let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Then is the world one, the goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons, <laughs> Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why, then, tis none to you. There's nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why, then, your ambition makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself the king of infinite space. <laughs> Were it not that I have bad dreams. Which dreams, indeed, are ambition, for the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. Shall we to the court? We'll wait upon you. No such a matter. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants, but to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But, in the beating way of friendship, what make you and Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Have you not sent for? Is this your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, come, may speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. You were sent for. There was a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know the good king and queen have sent for. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. What say you? Thanks, and I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. I have, late. Wherefore I know not lost all my mirth. And indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly friend, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, why it appears no other thing to me than foul and pestilent congregation of faith. What a piece of work is a man, a noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action how like an angel, in apprehension how like a god. And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. <laughs> no, nor woman neither, or your smiling you seem to say so. My lord! There was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? <laughs> to think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. What players are they? Why, even those you would want to take delight in the great tragedians of the city. Oh, here are the players. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. Your hand. Come then, you are welcome. But my uncle father and my aunt mother are deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad north northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from my hand saw. Well be with you, gentlemen. Hark you, Gildenstern, and you too. At each ear here, that great baby you see there is not get out of his squaddling clouds. Happily, he's a second time come to them, for they say an old man's twice a child. I will prophesy he comes to tell me of the players at market. You say right, sir, on Monday morning, for so indeed. Oh, my lord, I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you. When Roscius was an actor in Rome, the actors I come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral, <laughs> undividable, and poem unlimited. Seneca cannot be too heavy, nor Plautus too light. <laughs> Uh, what speech, my lord? I heard thee speak me a speech once, but it was 
never acted. And speech that I chiefly loved is a knee's tale to die young. And there about it especially where he speaks of prime slaughter. And the living your memory begin at this line. Let me see, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the knife resemble, hath now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal, head to foot. Now is he total ghouls, roasted in wrath and fire, with eyes like copper horrible. <laughs> the hellish Pyrrhus, old grandsire prime who seeks. So, proceed you. Anon he finds him, striking two shorted Greeks, his ancient sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls. Repugnant to command, unequaled match, Pyrrhus at prime drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whip and wind of his felt sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow, with flaming top stoops to his base, and with a hideous crash, takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear, for lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of Reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. And as a painted tyrant Pyrrha stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we so often see, against some storm, a silence in the heavens, the rack stands still, the bold wind speechless, and the orb below as hush as death anon the dreadful thunder doth rend the region after Paris pause. Aroused vengeance sets him to newer work, and never did the Cyclops ammo fall, a Mars armor forged for proof in turn with less remorse than Paris' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. This is too long! Pretty <laughs> <laughs> say on, he's for a jig or a tail of Baudry on his sleeves. Say on, come to Hecuba. Who? Oh, who had seen the Moblet Queen? Moblet Queen? That is good. Moblet Queen is good. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with bliss and room. A cloud upon that head where late the diadem stood. And for a robe about her lank and all or team loins, a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen with tongues in venom steep, gave fortune state, with treason half pronounced. But if the gods did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport, the mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of glamour that she made, unless things mortal moved them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. Look whether his lot and his colour and his tears in his eyes pray you no more. Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. My lord, very well. Follow that lord, and look you, mock him not. <laughs> Are you friends? I'll leave you till night. You are welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord. So, call you. Now I am alone. What a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, that in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage waned? Tears in his eyes, distraction in suspect, a broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing! For Hecuba! What's Hecuba to him? Or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her. What would he do? Had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculty of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause and can say. Nothing. No. Not for a king. 
upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Who breaks my painted cross, twists me by the nose, gives me the lie in the throat as deep as to the lungs? Who does me this? Because <laughs> I should take it, for I cannot leave it. I am pigeon liver and lack gall to make oppression bitter, or ere this. I should have fattened all the region kites with this slave's awful, bloody, bloody villain. Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave that I, the son of the dear father murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore and pack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab the scullion, fly upon it, flow about my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions for murder. Though it have no tongue, we'll speak with most miraculous orb. Oh, have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle? I'll observe his looks tended to the quick. He will blench. I know my course. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Chance to dream. I, the 
There's the love, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressors wrong, the proud lands haunting me. Pens, despise love, the laws delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns which patient merit at the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quiet as make with the bare bodkin. Who would part his bed? Grunt and sweat from her weary life. The dread of something after death. The undiscovered country, from whose form no traveler returns, puzzles the wind, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises a great pit and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Sakuna, there will you. Nymph, my orisons be all my sins remember. With my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you, now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them, words of so sweet breath and pose was made the things by which. Their parting lost. Take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. <laughs> Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? That means your lordship. I did love you once. I did. My lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I love you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why is for be a reader of sinners? I myself indifferent, honest, yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant and ain't all believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Oh. Where's your father?
the rest shall keep as they are to another race. do not that way tend. Nor what he spake, though it like form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul, or which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch of the disclose will be some danger, which for to prevent I have in quick determination set it down. He shall with speed to England. Happily the seas and countries variable with their variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his soul. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unwatched go. <laughs> Here's metal more attractive. 
thou mixture rank of midnight weeds collected, with Hecate's bed thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural mantle and dire property, unwholesome life usurp immediately. <laughs> Now, might I drink a pot of blood? 
and do such bitter business as the day we quake to look on. So, now to my mother. I will speak daggers to her, but you do not. How would my words so e'er she be shent to give them seals, never my soul consent? Drunk, asleep, for in his rage, the incestuous 
pleasure of his bed, then trip him, that his heels may kick a heaven, and his soul may be as dead and black as hell when he goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sick days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heaven go. Mother, 
For love of grace, say not that flattering unction to your soul, that not your trespass but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven, repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worser part of it, and live the pure with the other half. And when you are desirous to be blessed, our blessing beg of you. I do repent. Heaven hath pleased itself to punish me with this and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow me. You end so well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains to find. One word more, good lady. What shall I do? Not this. By no means that I bid you do, let the bloat king tempt you again to bed. Pinch, wanton, on your cheek, call you his mouth, or let him put a pair of breechy kisses, or paddling in your neck with his damn fingers, make you to ravel all this matter out, that I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must change and you know that. But I, I had forgotten. You so concluded I. You must let them see it. My two schoolfellows, whom I will trust as I will add this fame, they bear the mandate. They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. That's your work. This match is set in the pack. I love the guts into the naval room. Mother. Good night. Fuck. 
find the body. How dangerous is it that this man goes loose? But we must not set the strong law upon him and his love of the distracted multitude. This sudden sending him away must seem deliberate pause. How now, what has befallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from him. But where is he? Without, my lord. Guarded, to know your pleasure. Bring him before us. Oh, Gelding, turn! Bring him, my lord! Now, Hamlet, where is Polonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms were in Athens. Your worm is our only emperor for diet. We fed all creatures else to fat us, and we fed ourselves for nights. A man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of the fish that hath fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing. To show you how a king may go progress with guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven, send hither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Seek him there. He'll stay till you come. <laughs> Hamlet. The steed must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore prepare yourself for England. For England? I have this. Good. So is it. If thou knewest our purposes. I see a chair of the season. But come for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so my mother. Come for England! Away. For everything else is sealed and done that else leans on the affair. Pray you make haste. And England, if my love thou holdst it aught, is my great power thereof may give thee sense. Thou mayest not coldly hold our sovereign practices, which imports it full by letters congruing to that effect. The present death of heaven. Never departed. 
Mara. Pretty Ophelia. And you love without an oath. We'll make an end on it. By gifts and by St. Charity, a lack and by for shame. Your men will do it if they come to it by cock, they are to blame. Go she before you tumbled me, you promised me to wed. So what I have done, my younger son, and thou hast not come to my bed. How long hath she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot choose but we that they should lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall know of it. And so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Oh, wait upon her. Give her good water, I beseech thee. Poison of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Hey, Gertrude, Gertrude. When sorrows come, they come not single spies. Give them the town. Alas, my boy, the same! Where are they, Schlitzer? Let them guard the door! One for all, and save yourself, my lord. The ocean overpearing of a swift sea, swallow flat to more impetuous age. They know what I do. They don't ride a set of a bear draw.
amazement and madness, thought and remembrance bid. To set up for you in Columbines. Let's 
brother think on this? This plan should have a back or second in case the first should blast in fruit. Let me see. We'll make a solemn wager on your cunning. <laughs> so, I have it. When in your motion you are hot and dry and then calls for drink, I'll have prepared a chalice for the nod, whereupon but sip it. If you by chance escape your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. How oh, now, sweet queen? One woe doth spread upon another's heels, so fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Where? There is a willow, grows a slant of brook, that shows his oar leaves in the glassy stream. There with fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples, that liberal shepherds give a grosser name, but our cold maids do dead men's fingers call them. There on the pendant boughs her cornet leads, clambering to hang, an envious sliver broke, when down the weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide, and mermaid-like, a while they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old tunes, as one incapable of her own distress, but like a creature, native and endued unto that element. But long it could not be, so that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Alas, then she is drowned. 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 Too much of water hast thou, poor Ophelia. And therefore I forbid my tears. But yet it is untrue. Nature her custom holds. Let shame say what it will. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that men would blaze. But that this folly doubts it. Let's follow Gertrude. How much I had to do to calm his rage. Now fear I this will give it start again. If I drown myself willingly, it all shoots it out. 
in an act on three branches. It is to act, to do, to perform. Hey, go, she drowned herself many ways. But here you go, Mendo. Hey, give me leave. Here lies the water. Good. Yes, good. Here stands the man. Yes. Good. If this man goes to this water and drowns himself, no! it is willy-nilly he goes. Mark you that. But if the water comes to him and drowns him, he drowns not himself. Ergo, he that's not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. Puzzle <laughs> 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 your brain no more about it. Go get the in. Ooh. Fetch me a stoop of liquor. <laughs> if you, when I did love, did love me, thought it was very sweet to contract all the time for my behold. Only thought there was nothing neat. Is this fellow no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making? <laughs> Custom hath made it in him a property of easiness? To the insert. But age with its steely steps has clawed me in its clutch and shipped me into the land as if I never been so much. <laughs> that skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. And the knave jousted to the ground as if it were King's jawbone that did the first murder. And now my lady worm is chapless and not about the magic of the sex in Spain. There's another. It may not that be the skull of a lawyer? If I beat his quiddities now, his quillets, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks. Why does he suffer this rude knave to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and will not speak to him of his action of battery? I will speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, sir? Mine, sir. Oh, a bit to play to be made for such a guest as me. I think it be right indeed for thou lies, Jim. You lie out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou well, dost lie in it to be in and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. What? Oh, Here's a quick lie, sir. Twill away again from me to you. <laughs> what man dost thou dig it for? But no man, sir. What woman then? No man neither. Who is to be buried in it? For one that was a woman, but rest her soul. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, neighbours. How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days of the year till I came to that day that our last King Hamlet overcame Bartenbrough. <laughs> How long is that since? Can you not tell that? <laughs> Every fool can tell that. It was the same day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent to England. Ay, Mary, why was he sent to England? Because he was mad. He'll recover his wits there, or if he does not, it's no great matter there. <laughs> Twill not be seen in him there. There, the men are as mad as he. How can he mad? Oh, very strangely, they say. How strange the faith and lives in his heads. Upon what realm? Why? Here in Denmark. <laughs> I've been sexton man, boy, here thirty years. How long will the man lie of the earth there to rot? be not rotten before he die, as we have many a parky courses nowadays that can scarce hold the laying in, it can last you eight or nine years. Here, here's a skull now. This skull is laying in the earth three and twenty years. This was it. <laughs> a horse and mad fellow it was. <laughs> Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flagon of Rhenish on my head once. This skull, sir, is Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This? Eh? Even that? Let me see. The last. Poor Yorick. I knew him, gracious. Fellow of infinite jest of excellent fancy. He has borne me on his back a thousand times. Now how horrid my imagination it is. The horrid rises up. Here hung his lips, which I have kissed I know not how often. Where be your jibes now? Who gambles with songs, with flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roar. No one now to mock your own grinning, white chap fallen. Is that like Alexander looked at his fashion of ill? He himself and smelt so? He himself, my lord. What face uses make you turn, Richard? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Salt, 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 salt,
exchange for more gracious which is advice to know me. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will receive it with all diligence of spirit. Put your brother to his great use for the sport of heaven. I, I thank your lordship, it is very hot. No, believe me, it is very cold the wind is lord. <laughs> it is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. But yet, he thinks it is very sultry and hot for my complexion. Exceedingly, my lord, it is very sultry, as to what I cannot tell how. But, my lord, his majesty bid me signify to you that he hath laid a great wager on your head. So this is matter. I beseech you, remember. Nay, good, my lord, my ease of good faith. So, here is newly come to court Laertes. Believe me, an absolute gentleman, full of most excellent differences, a very soft society and great showing. Indeed, to speak feelingly of him, he is the card or calendar of gentry, for you shall find of him the continent of what part a gentleman would see. What imports the nomination of this gentleman? Of Laertes. Of him, sir. You are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that, lest I should compare with him in excellence, but to know men well would to know himself. I mean, sir, for his weapon. But in the imputation laid on him by them, in his need, he's my fellow. What's his weapon? <laughs> Rapier and dagger. There's two of his weapons, sir. Well. The king, my lord, hath wagered with him six Barbary horses, against which he has imponed, as I take it, six French rapiers and poniards, with their assigned as girdle hangings and so. Three of the carriages in faith are very dear to fancy, very responsive to the hills, most delicate carriages, and a very liberal conceit. Why is this imposed, as you call it? The king, sir, hath laid that in a dozen passes between yourself and him, he shall not exceed the three hits. It would come to immediate trial, if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Sir, I will walk through the hall. If it please his majesty, it is the breathing time of David. I will win for him if I can. If not, I'll gain nothing but my shame in the audience. Shall I deliver you even so? To this effect, sir, with what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Since you went to France, I have been in continual practice that you will at the odds. My, my good lord, a tis the foolery. If your mind dislike anything, <coughs> obey it. I will forestall their repair hither and say you are not fit. Not a wit. You defy all duty. There's a special providence in the fall of the spare. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. And you, the judge. 
judges. Bear a wary eye. Come on, sir. Come, my lord. Wretched queen, do 
me to pale and tremble at this chance that I could mute our audience to this act had I but time. As the spell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, oh, I could tell you. But let it be. Horatio, I'm dead. Thou lives. Report me and my cause a right to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I'm more an antique Roman than a day in years, yet some liquor left. Give me the cup. Let go. By heaven, I'll have it. What a wounded name, if standing thus unknown, shall live behind me. Thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Thank you. 